<clears throat> All right, guys. Nice. Let's get this started. We are welcoming you to this is actually episode 12. It's hard to believe it's been three months since we started season two. And if you have uh, missed some of the previous 12 episodes of this season, you want to catch up on the first season of Tech Talk Tuesday, it's all available on YouTube for your binging pleasure. <laughs> yes, binging. I like the, that. Uh, everybody likes to binge Netflix, now, right? 30-minute right? yeah. Tech Talks, just boom, boom, boom. Baseline boom, and chill. Boom. <laughs> and uh, the Baseline channel is Baseline Web Training, and it's all one word to find um, Tech Talk Tuesdays. And then I recommend just bookmarking that. If you bookmark it, Dan will always add it to that playlist. So you can always see um, every upcoming uh, episode. And uh, quick introductions. We've got Dan Conger, our training manager. Chris Wright, VP of sales. Good morning. I'm Andy Humphrey, irrigation technology consultant for Baseline. And uh, today we're going to dive into base manager maps. You know, we're going to talk about things you probably already know about it if you've used it. And then we're going to also talk about some of the ways that you can enhance uh, the capability of it and maybe some tricks that Dan, Chris, and I have learned along the way. So yeah. with that, Dan, why don't you lead us off? Cool. Hey, before we get started, I, I want to use this. You want to use my, my moment here to remind people that so nine times out of 10, I'm doing trainings. This is my busy training season. So I'm doing what may be one of the last organized trainings for the season because people are getting busy. Um, starting tomorrow uh, at 7 Pacific, that class is full. And then I've got another one at 930 Pacific. And that one still has a few seats left in it. So here is the in the chat, I just put the baseline.learnupon.com link. It's in the store. It's available. You just add it to it. Just register. No fees associated with it. And it's a, um, I made a slight tweak on this one. It's a three-part class now, um, about an hour and a half each. And it covers soup to nuts all the way through. So really, really good. It's an adaptation of our in-person training. So check it out. Awesome. And if that link doesn't click for you, just copy it, paste it in the browser. Oh, that's right. Out. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Very good. So I wanted to talk about base manager maps. And what, one of the things I've noticed in my trainings that if people that are even baseline users are like, maps, I didn't know we could do that. And there's a lot of that that goes on. I'm like, well, we don't want this to be a secret. We want to share what we know because we've definitely got some sophisticated users, but then there's other people that need some more information. So yeah. I... I want to and I've, I've noticed when uh, I get on base manager and, and go through accounts, a lot of times the maps aren't set up. Yeah. Right. right? So I think it's highly underutilized, but there's a lot uh, that can increase your imp efficiencies when using them, when managing your controllers. Beautiful. Yep. As well as, you know, I'll just say real quick, the turnover process. So I see a lot of times the installation contractor, you know, kind of does whatever the, uh, for lack of a better word, whatever the minimum is to get the job done, but they don't sometimes take the uh, opportunity to you know provide full value. And I think sometimes if you set the map up for uh, your client or your customer and you can walk them through that process during the handover uh, time period, it's a real real added value and benefit. Nice. Definitely and impressive. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's let's take a look at it. So let me right. share share my screen. Okay, so starts off with the browser as always, and I'm going to log in now. At, on this on this screen, though, Chris, we've been noticing this this banner up here. Oh right. yeah, yeah, good call. So uh, if you'll if you've noticed the last uh, few months, we've been putting banners up on the login screen. This one uh, we just put up last Friday, um, letting you all know that we have changed uh, essentially the email server that alerts and alarms mm -hmm. uh, go out on to make that uh, more efficient and reliable and uh, faster. So um, if you haven't taken the time to set up your notifications in Base Manager, um, just go to the link that's there. It links to the YouTube video that is in our library that will give you a quick tutorial on how to set up your subscriptions. Beautiful. Nice. Okay, so I'm going to log in so we can get to the map. And this is my training controller. There's that banner again. So I'll clear that out. And 
this is all about base manager. So we're going to jump into base manager out of the, out of the multiples in app manager. And right now, this is my demo 3200 controller. And currently, we are on the company level map. And what I wanted to point out on the company level map is you can see I have two controller or two sites, pardon me, at this level. I've got one controller here that's blue and another controller here that's gray. Well, from the color codes, we know that this, this controller is offline and this controller is watering right now. So we can see what's going on. So why would you scale out at a national level for a company view? Well, because my training company is national. I do US and Canada for my training. Okay. Realistically, most users are, are probably going to pick, you know, Andy Andy's, you know, has a company that might be this Northern Peninsula, or maybe they're really tight and they're going to be, you know, really close to home, right? They're going to be in a much narrower, narrower area. Yep. So yeah. that uh, company map is zoomable, so you can dial it into the geographical area that uh, you work in or where you have sites that uh, may have controllers on them. So if you're a municipality, yeah. zero in on your city limits. If you're, you know, a, a, a county parks, zoom in to the county where you've got sites, et cetera, et cetera. So now here's, here's a good reminder is, so let's say every time I zoom in, I'm like, hey, let's get to the Denver area. And then when I come, I'm going to leave for a moment. And when I come back to that company, it's back to the U.S. level. Well, then I need to zoom in. Well, if I want it to be there, it's click edit and then zoom in and then save it. And next time I return, it will come back to this level. So if, if it's not at the right level, click edit and then save it to the level that you want it to. And, and likewise, I can change this to different types of maps, which we'll see in just a moment. Road, roadmap for me for this US works pretty well. So I want to go down to the site level that's here in Nevada. So I, I have two ways of getting there. So I can click on this site and I can click on this icon or I can go to the maps and go to the current site. Either one works. Now this site level, I've changed this site level. Now this I've, I've zoomed in to show um, this particular park and it could be a little bit tighter. It kind of depends. Um, and I've had another controller. My other controller is not on here. So we'll, we'll fix that in just a moment, but I have actually have two controllers on this site. My second one, we need to fix. So I've got a controller, which is, that's what the C stands for. That's my demo 3200, or I can click, I can go back up to this. This is that site level. So, so I could click on the controller or I could click on the current controller, which I'm about to do. So site level really, really works well when you have multiple controllers, right? If you've got, you know, 10 controllers in a, in a park, you might have it set to the zoom level of the park and show all the 10 controllers. And then you could zoom into the North quadrant, the South quadrant and the center, however that works. Okay. So on a, on a site level map, <coughs> excuse me, if you've just got one or two controllers on it, what's the purpose of the site level map? That's not a whole lot of um, info that's there. What else can you do with the site level map that may Ooh. be helpful? Do you mean like edit for icons and put things on there? Sure. Okay. Well, how about how about we go into the, the controller level and then we come back up to that one? Can we back okay. up to that? That's fine. Yep. Okay. So let's let's zoom in. I, I like where you're going with this. So on current controller, so let's, I've set the zoom level on the current controllers. Again, I could zoom out to however I want, but this is the level that I've set, kind of covers the edges of my park that I want to see. And immediately we've got that same color code method that works throughout the entire baseline ecosystem. So we can bring that up in the menu and see color status, right? So we can see that uh, 55 is soaking while 54 is watering and a lot of other zones are done. And then number one has something going on with there's an error, some other messages on that. So the color codes, right? That's, there's a lot of value in that and that's consistent throughout. Yeah. So this is that at a glance indicators to what's happening with your controller without you having to actually drill into the uh, controller programming itself. You can just pull up the map, look at it, see if you've got anything that needs to be addressed immediately mm -hmm. um, or see what's uh, happening. 
um, whether or not it's watering and what area the park is watering and then move on to the next controller. Right. Yep. And again, definitely. when you're using baselines, you know, AI watering engine, it's not just round the clock watering, right? There's lots of things coming on, coming off at different times, soaking, cycling. And so it's really nice to just pop this up and see what's currently happening on the site in that real time look versus quick view, which is just structured numerically. This is, you know, structured geographically. Yeah. So to that point, Andy, if I would see, so here we've got an error. So that could be a, we'd have to go to a different menu to see what that error is. But if I saw, you know, all of these zones in this parking lot, if they all had an error geographically, I could see maybe there's a problem with that parking lot. Maybe it has something yeah. to do with the construction that we did last the other day on there. And we've seen, I've seen some sites where they want to sort of flow balance the hydraulics. And so they want to have, you know, zones either running at different sides of the park at the same time, or just on one side of the park at the same time. So we visually, you can see that happen a little bit better than when you're just looking at the grid in quick view. Agreed. Agreed. So I'm missing some icons on here. So I'm going to place a couple, a, a couple zone markers on here. And I'm going to start with zone markers, but let's talk about, let's talk about all the different things that I can place on here. So right now we're only showing zones, but we can add everything else that has a unique baseline serial number. So we've got moisture sensors, temperature sensors, event switches, oh, uh, precip sensors, pressure sensors, anything that is um, come across through that search and assign process. So in the basically zones, anything that is connected yeah. uh, to the two wire right. is, is listed there. <clears throat> now, these were all of these were populated. These came up during the search and science. So that's how I, the, the system knows they're in there. And I've already named them, so it makes it a lot easier. But, you know, these zones aren't named. But so I'll, I'll start with these. So I'm going to just click on zone 14 and then place it where I know zone 14 is. Um, we got to fix zone 14 and there's zone 15 and then click on zone 16 and place zone 16. Now, if I don't like the placement, you know, maybe I need to zoom in a little bit to realize that zone 14 is a little closer to there and, and zone 15 is closer to this gazebo and 16 is closer to the corner. And then I can return to that zoom level. And but I can Dan, how do you know if you've put the pin exactly on the valve box? <laughs> You, uh, I don't, oh, is that a trick question? I don't know that you do. Do you put your pins on the valve box? Where do you put your pins? Oh. I know where I like my pins. Okay. I know where I like my pins. <laughs> <laughs> At the acupuncture. So to, to, to that point, Andy, so these, I'm, I'm attempting to place these on where the valve box is and the same with 69, 70, and 71. But if you look at 63, 64, and 65, those are actually the areas that it's being irrigated. So I, I, I think there's two different schools of thought. Um, place it at the valve manifold or the valve box. And one of the challenges with that is usually sites don't have a single, usually there are multiples in a, in a, in a manifold. So it might look something more like this, right? And that might start getting a little jammed up. I or they like may actually be like, I mean... If you zoomed in there and actually put them next to each other, they'd stack. So that's right, because Right. It might look something clustered like that. Well, that's, that's not particularly helpful. So I, I like personally, and, and we might agree on this one that these might be make more sense, right? 63, 64, 65 shows the area that it's irrigating right field, center field, left field, for example. Yep. Yep. Is, is that the way you, you, that's how I, I prefer to mark an area because it's mm -hmm. also I, I also don't want to set the wrong expectation, you know, with a customer that it mm. is marking something specific because it's really not designed to be a, you know, exact uh, GPS locating uh, product. Right. It's Good meant point. to really be a visual representation to make it easier to manage your system. So with that in mind, I prefer to just mark an area. I, I like that too. And I think I suspect that water managers like this technique more. And if anybody is going to, want to know where the manifold is, or that might be more of a technician. I think from a water management perspective, this makes a lot more sense and, and the accuracy as well. Yep. But if you are wanting to locate where a moisture sensor may be buried and mark that, you could get the specific GPS coordinates for that 
True. Put that yeah. in. Yep. The marker will then yep. be marked right where that is buried for future. Right. Rounds. So yeah, here are all my moisture sensors that are you know already named. So the placement of these of these soil moisture sensors would be, you know, again, I'm just kind of guessing right now. This would be great to do while I'm out in the field. But these are all the devices that are in here. So the since I can do all these different operations. So let's save this because I, 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 I skipped over the operations that we can do here. We have the same operations that we can do while we're in quick view, right? So we can start it for a certain time. We can set it to done, test it, learn flow and chart the moisture. And then we also have the same information we get out of quick view, like what program is it is and what main line is it associated with. Now, have either of you used the set to done or because the way I've, the way I picture set to done being used is this one is soaking and if I saw that, like, it doesn't need to, uh, this might be a time to set it to done. Is it, how, how do you yeah, see? Yeah, I mean, and that, what that does, Dan, is it lets you stop that specific zone without terminating the program. Right. You're just telling that zone, hey, let's set it to done. And then it'll just continue with the regular schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Or you can set the program to done in the mm -hmm. same fashion, which will set all of the zones associated with that program. Right. Right. So, so that changed from the blue soaking to a green idle or done. Nice. So let's go back to, so let's talk about um, icons that you might want to see on this map that don't have, that aren't connected to the 2R system or that don't have a unique baseline serial number. So one, I want to, there's a pump station on this lake. So to do that, I'm, I'm going to do make a uh, create a marker for that, and that's a. Custom. This is where everyone needs to pay close attention. Right, Dan is talking about something that is really key, and not a lot of people know exists. So listen True. up. <laughs> yeah, and we've had a question come in about you know custom markers. Um, the question was, you know, can you customize the station markers, but only with description, right? But not with uh, customizing the marker itself or what the number is on it or the indicator, but you can create custom markers for other devices. And this is what Dan will show us now. If, so custom markers is a two-step process. Let me repeat that, a two-step process. So the first process is we're gonna create the marker. So I'm gonna go to custom markers and create a custom marker. So right here is this plus. And I have, there's a couple of steps that are critical. Otherwise it won't stick, it won't take. So this is a pump station. So I'm gonna label it. And this one's, I'm gonna go PS for pump station and pick a color. I'm gonna pick this weird rust brown color. And generally these colors don't overlap the, st the status colors. You notice the green is a different green. The blue is a different blue. So this is gonna be a, um, this is gonna be a, five horsepower pump station. And we'll get, we'll talk about what these other things are in just a moment. And I need to save this. I got to have a description. I have to have a color and a name. Got those three things. It will save. Now it's not on the map yet. I've created it. Now it's in my list of items and I'm going to now go to my pump station, click on that and now add it to my map. And there's my pump station. So I'm going to save this. Now remember, we can click on these and, and activate. We can do, we can interact with this. Well, the pump station is not connected to the two wire path, so I can't do that. I've got the name and it shows it on the map. So that's first level is create a custom marker for anything that you want to see on the map that baseline that's not connected to the two wire path. So that's a pump station. Now I'm assuming it's not a pump start relay, right? We we aren't because I could. I do have, I did have that in the markers, but I've added two other custom markers on here that I think are to highlight a few, few things that we can do with this. So over here, this is an RP and this is a, I've named this as a two inch Febco 825Y. So this is a, in the West, this is a cross connection device to prevent backflow prevention. And I've got a URL here. And then I've also, well, which will, click on it in just a moment. But in the notes section, I said it was last serviced uh, almost a year ago. So it's what, 11 months ago. Well, here in the West um, or in my, in my county, you have to have these serviced and tested every single year. Well, this is telling me that my test is going to be coming up pretty soon. And then this link, this URL 
this is an external link and I've selected this to take me to a parts schematic. So this is an exploded, you know, this is an outside link and it's going to take me to that. And it could take me to just about anywhere I want it to go. Any, it's a, it's a live viable link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and then here's another one. This is, I was looking for a good example. This one is SP and I use this. We talked about solar last, uh, last time. Well, this, I just use this as a good document. So this is solar panel info. This is a Google Drive link. Well, with the Google Drive link, we can do just about anything, right? So now I've got a, an actual working Excel or, or uh, sheet. So you could link this to a, docu a Word document that you could keep a running list on or Excel or other, other things. So I think, this, I think these external links and external descriptions are really uh, there's a lot of value in there. And, and Andy, I know you've, you've done some work. Yeah. Cause you know, there's uh, let's see, this was designed as a tool to make it easier to manage your site, you know, visually. Right. But it wasn't designed as a, the world's best mapping software that was ever created for irrigation, you know, uh, systems. And so we're seeing lots of other third party software, you know, develop Google sheet, mm -hmm. Google docs, um, one I've been seeing people use called company cam. It's a way to just take pictures of your site. And so if you've mm -hmm. got sort of folders or places where information, content data exists somewhere else, then you can just link, you know, right to it and use this sort of uh, base manager map as a, as a quick reference point uh, for either for you or for uh, your client. So if you've got information about this site stored somewhere, pop a quick pin on there, put a note. And uh, Dan, I wish we had spoke before, going live today, I would have told you to make a pin for a weather station. So that's, oh. a, that's one that I use quite often. Yeah. And then yep. uh, if you've connected your weather station using W Underground, right, which is how we, we use uh, weather stations, you can put a link in the custom pin to that specific station Ooh. on the W Underground. Nice. And right from base manager, you can hop over and see all the weather data points and the historical info. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. And for your pump station, if your pump station is connected to the internet for user interface, you can link to the interface for the pump station right from base manager without having to open up a different browser. Right. Do that. Yeah. Because this, so, this could take you anywhere. Nice. Yeah. Forth. Yep. So what we're Beautiful. trying to say is get creative. The tools are here. Yeah. You can use them beyond, you know, what it, what they look like. You know, there's different, definitely some things you can to do to enhance your system. Yep. So what about uh, the maps, Andy? We talked about the, you know, the, the, the maps themselves aren't ideal, but what if uh, you do have a site that's not built out yet or doesn't give a depiction in, in the maps that, uh, we use in base manager that's accurate. What can you do about that? Yeah, that's probably one of the most frequently asked questions because of our presence with new construction, right? Either residential or commercial, you know, Google and Bing do not keep up on a daily basis with these projects. And so we oftentimes have requests for putting um, either a new uh, site picture or an architectural rendering or an irrigation CAD plan. Uh, or in this case, I know Todd, you're actually on here with us today. I won't say, you know, your name or where this project is. It's just a snapshot of an amazing residential home. And in this case, this was a drone footage uh, of the property. And so, awesome. we can yeah. uh, custom overlay this on the map. And there's a specific process for this on our websites. So if you want to have this done, there's a link. You can upload your picture. You can fill out the form and then work with our support engineers to, to make this happen. And there's actually a pretty interesting story about this site. And the essentially, the picture was so high quality that we can't zoom down enough inside Base Manager to really see the quality of the image. And so what we did is we decided to throw the GPS coordinates out the window on this one. In other words, those pins are like potentially a mile apart from each other. So we made the map represent almost the entire state that this property was in <laughs> um, so that we could get that kind of resolution that we were looking for. And so, again, there's always ways to try to, you know, sort of improve what we can do to enhance the visualization. And that's what we did on this case. Yep. So if you go to baselinesystems.com, go to the support tab, 
in the left menu on the left side of the page at the bottom, it says uh, request map overlay or something to that effect. Click on that and it'll link you to the a jot form that you can then fill out that goes to support and then support can assist you in doing the overlay desired. Nice. So then Andy had a second picture that you sent me. And I, I like these. I like this one too. This was yeah, an overlay this one's as nice well. because it's very simple, uh, yet can be confusing to try to sort of uh, conceptualize uh, because if you, if you think about what we're doing, we can in, insert an image, right? An image is a rectangle, a square rectangle. And the way that uh, we insert the image is we need a GPS coordinate of the top left corner and the GPS co coordinate of the bottom right corner. And then the engineers put those GPS coordinates in and boom, it snaps to scale essentially. And so the way we were able to do this one with just the pipes is we asked for, or the client gave us a uh, either transparent GIF or transparent ping file or PNG. And so the only thing that we're seeing is the pipes. Everything else is, is transparent. And Dan, if you were to use your cursor and sort of hover over that top left, you can see a little red indicator just to the right, right there. So that's essentially the top left corner of this graphic. Oh, and there's nice. another one down in the lower right, you know, essentially right there. And uh, that is the image. And so we had those two GPS coordinates and then engineers insert it. And there you have it. Nice. Cool. So let's, I wanted to, to share real quickly. I think I've just got just another minute here to show um, the, how to, a, another way to set up the maps. And I'm going to take just a moment while, while you guys, you can vamp for just a moment. And while I bring this up. And I'm looking, Chris, where did you say the, uh, the uh, uh, overlay link yeah. was? Oh, here it is. I found it. I'm going to drop it in the chat for everyone. Oh, so I was just doing the same to. thing. You do it. Bookmark it. <laughs> then you can all right go on dan okay i'm i'm bringing up my phone so uh, uh i'm, I'm going to share my my phone screen in just a moment here and there we go i'm still sharing my screen correct yeah mm -hmm. beautiful okay so now we've got my phone up here Nice. Yeah. This is good tech, Dan. Thanks for squeezing this in at the end. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go to go into um, baseline apps and log in. And clear that out. And I wanted to. I really want to. What I want to show y'all is geolocating, and geolocating is a way to speed up that map process. So let's get to. You can go into. Got to go back to App Manager. I know. I just realized. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Thank you. I realized what I did. Mobile Access. I got to go into Mobile Access to do this. Okay. Good. We're here, Andy. Keep him on track. <laughs> One of these times, we'll let him out of his home office. <laughs> I know. I hate. <laughs> it's only like I've done this for fourteen times in the last month in trainings. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Geolocate a device. So geolocating a device, I've got all the devices that we had on that list, whether it's zones, custom markers, flow meters, and let's go to zones. And I'm going to take zone 14 and watch in that upper right-hand corner what happens when I hit mark. Now, accuracy is, it's moderate right now. It'll get better as I move outside, but we'll go with this low accuracy for right now. And I'm going to mark it. We've got those GPS coordinates. It's placed zone 14 here in my office in San Diego. It's pulled it off Pro of the site in Nevada Proven. and placed it. Pardon? Prove it. Prove. Okay. Go You've got 45 seconds left, Dan. Make okay. it happen. See you if can I can do, do it. it. See if we I can believe do it in you, Dan. Okay. <laughs> While he's doing that, you know, I saw 33 uh, feet of accuracy. I've seen the lowest I've seen is eight. I think we may have talked about this in the past or, or yeah, asked, we had everybody but... drop in the chat best accuracy that they've seen before. So, but, oh, I um, I gonna pull you it know, off? if it's not a hundred percent accurate, you can always push edit on the map 
and then um, <laughs> zoom in and mark it. Where oh, it worked. It. Good. Got Dan. it. Look at that. <laughs> now we know where Dan lives. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah that's, that's why I'm not a screen recording level. that he just played. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh. So yeah, to that to that point, right? If if you don't like where that geolocate landed, since it's doing it real, you can drag it and move it. So I think geolocate is a really quick way to get that valuable map created. And you could drive, walk a site, and just boom, 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 knock it all out. Especially if you do the method that Andy and I like, putting an area that's irrigated, it speeds up dramatically. Definitely. All right, we're at the bottom of the hour. So let's Pull it uh, make it a wrap for this episode of Tech Talk Tuesday. Thank you again, everybody that joined us today. We had great attendance. I know you are uh, starting to uh, ramp up and uh, start up your systems. So have fun doing that. Good luck if you need anything in support. Uh, and the what's process. the one request we have, Chris? What's the one thing they can do? The one thing that they can do on, in behalf of Tech Talk Tuesday is invite a colleague to join us. Um, so that we increase our listenership and participation so that we can get this great content out to market. So beautiful. thanks again for joining us. Have a great week. Be safe, work hard, and we will see you next Tuesday. Thanks, guys. Thanks Bye. See you later.